why is infill so important for your 3D prints? Coming up on Zachary 3D Prints. from Sakurai 3D Prints bringing you how to reviews and many other things about 3D printing. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing and I will put the names of my social media accounts in the left corner and when you want to support my YouTube channel on Patreon, also that is possible, I will put the link in the description. Thanks for your support. So, like I mentioned in the intro, when I started with 3D printing, I didn't know anything about why I should use infill for my 3D printing. Because there's a difference between printing a part like this, because this is not a model, this is something structural. This is something that you 3D print and then put it somewhere, or maybe paint it and then put it somewhere. So, you need for this a different kind of infill. The difference between that, well, this is going to be a structural part for me in move humanoid robot. This is not a fingertip. No, this is a part that has some other loads than, of course, this skull. When I got my Ender 3, this little doggy came out of it like this. And there you can see what the infill is. This is a 20% or 10% infill, like the big brother, well, sort of. It's big, it's both in gray, metallic gray. This, by the way, the same gray that I use quite a lot for different kind of 3D printing projects. This is the T800. I'm going to reprint it again because uh, the 3D printer also quit on this one. After some adjustments, I got different kind of things out of my 3D printer, out of my Ender 3 Pro. It's a very good machine. I also will put a link in the description if you want to buy a 3D printer from Corality uh, Ender 3 Pro. So, infill. So when it comes for a calibration cube, it's called a calibration cube because from this cube you can see a different kind of things what your settings from your 3D printer is. Whether this stock settings or different kind of settings, it doesn't matter. But with this cube you can see if your 3D printer needs some calibrations, uh, needs some changes or something like this. But also when you are changing from filament brand if you have for example some shrinkage or some other things that you need to think of but that i will leave for another video so for this calibration cube i use an infill of 10 percent because that is the less filament abuse and also uh, the result is going to be on the outward the same so in this case, you saw this cube coming by very much times on my YouTube channel. One time I did a video on how to use Prusa Slicer instead of Cura. I will put the link in the upper right corner and there you can see how this works. But that is for the calibration cube. This, these are parts for the Inmove robot. I thought, well, maybe I should use 100%. Well, that could be the case, but then you use a lot of filament, which is not needed, because if you are, for example, some body parts that don't have any structural thing, then you don't really need 100% infill. It looks cool, but, yeah, well, it's not needed. Also, one other thing, 
when the outer walls from the print is too tight, there is no space for infill. So, hmm. so these parts are with an infill of 50%. The recommended is uh, for non-structural parts, uh, it's uh, 20 or 30%, but some other parts like the structural parts, the gears, the, the worm wheels, something like that, they have an infill of 50%. Well, from my own convenience and also going through all, all of the STL files and put it in G-code, I used just the same infill everywhere. So every part, whether it's this part or this part, everything has an infill of 50% in diamond shape. I cannot show you now at this moment what diamond shape is, I will put the B-roll in the video so that you can see what the diamond shape is for the uh, triangle shape because the little triangles when I was 3d printing uh, parts of this you could see it but now you don't um, hey if you like this video so far can you please put a thumbs up that would help my channel quite a lot and also YouTube algorithm itself so but when it comes for movie uh, heads or, or bust or something that you only see from the outside then you don't need that much infill why because what you see is what you not see that might be. but in this case this is an infill of 10 percent it quits and like i said earlier it stopped for no reason just like the dog Funny, that is both on the head, but then I don't know what really went wrong. Issue solved because I was printing bigger parts. So, yeah, that is that. When should I, when do I use 100% infill? Well, most of the time with very small parts that can break. For example, this is something that I uh, reproduced on Tinkercad. I also made a video about how to use Tinkercad to make your own 3D prints. I will put the link in the, in the upper right corner, but also in the description of this video. This part is printed 100%. If you can look very closely, you will see why I used 100%. Well, there's not so much room to fill in, but also I want to have a part that is very strong. This is something that I can use for bigger models or bigger uh, studs, because this I can use on my Ender 3 Pro to make some adjustments or make some enclosure but that is for another future video because i saw that i can reproduce this in pla plastic i don't want to use it for mechanical uses because i think when rolls wheels are going over this it will break eventually and it will go damaged and you don't want to have that but something like a spool holder or an enclosure that would be more useful to use so that being said whether you are using QR or you use a different kind of slicing software for my example I use the nine calibration cubes in uh, Prusa slicer 2.1 I will put the download download link in the description it's a very nice uh, uh, slicing software I also did a few, a few videos of it I'm not going to mention again that I did some how to's about that for slicer software like Prusa you got different kind of patterns for your infill depending on which kind of uh, support for the outside that you need I'm not going to do that because still looking nice on one of my upper shelves when I'm using a lot of pressure on it you can as you can hear it's 
not very strong. So I'm not going to press this because it's a model, it's not to be pressed. It can fall and then maybe he bumps his head and he has some little dent. But then if you are using parts like this, a triangle shape is more likely to be used than for this. I can use it also for this, but it costs a lot of filament, like I mentioned. In Prusa Slicer, you have set things like red linear, you've got grid, you've got triangles, you've got stars, you've got line, you've got concentric, you have gyro, right? You've got Hilbert curve, you have many other useful patterns that you can use on your infill. Different kind of patterns depends on which kind of thing you are going to 3D print. Whether it's a model like this or a structural part. Decide for yourself which kind of infill and pattern you are going to use. That being said, thanks for watching. This was Sahri 3D Prints about your infill or the infill for 3D printing. See you next time, happy 3D printing and hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and look me up on other social media. That being said, happy 3D printing. This was Zachary from Zachary 3D Print. Bye bye.